This video is for my Chem 2 class as we are getting ready to do the Water of Hydration Lab. And so I want to start with a couple of definitions. First of all, we're going to be talking about hydrates. And in our case here, hydrates will be ionic compounds or salts. And it's a salt that contains water molecules in its crystal structure. And those water molecules are tied up in its crystal structure in a fixed ratio. It won't just be any amount of water molecules. There's always a, a definite ratio of the water molecules to the ionic compound or to the salt. We will also be talking about the anhydrous salt. And the anhydrous salt is that ionic compound or salt without the water in its crystal structure. Now, the purpose of this lab is that we want to know what is that ratio of the water molecules to the salt or to the ionic compound. So we're really finding an empirical formula here. If you're not sure how to do uh, empirical formula problems or how to find an empirical formula uh, for a compound, uh, go ahead and take a, take a look at my video on empirical formulas. But this assumes you already have some basic understanding of determining empirical formulas. And so since we are trying to find the empirical formula, we, we need to find is the ratio of the moles of that anhydrous salt compared to the moles of the water that, that was in the hydrated version of it. Now, for this lab that we're going to be doing, we will be using copper 2 sulfate and the hydrate of copper 2 sulfate. Now, as I go through the video, um, at times I may just be referring to the hydrate and to the anhydrous salt. But for our, for our purposes, we're really interested in the copper 2 sulfate. So with my limited artistic skills, I've tried to put a little sketch together of what we're going to do. And we are going to start out with our hydrate of copper 2 sulfate and we'll have that in a test tube and we're going to have to find some things out about that test tube and the hydrate uh, before we heat it up and then what we're going to do is we are going to heat that hydrate over a burner flame and as we start to do that uh, one thing we're going to notice is there's going to be a color change um, in that salt now what's going on here is that as we're heating it up we are forcing the water molecules out of the crystal structure so we're going to be driving off the water the water vapor uh, or the water that was in the crystal is going to be leaving in the form of water vapor and should be exiting the test tube which means that what we have left over in our test tube is our anhydrous salt so after heating our goal is to have just the anhydrous salt in the test tube and to remove all the water from that crystal structure so as we do this some of the data that we will be collecting is we will need to know the mass of the empty test tube before we even start and i've got just some sample data to go along here and so we have the mass of that empty test tube then we will put our hydrate, our copper 2 sulfate hydrate, into the test tube and we will get the mass of the test tube with the salt in it before we heat it up. Then again, we will be heating up that test tube with the goal of driving off all that water out of the crystal structure. Then we'll let our, our test tube cool down and then get the mass of the test tube and the salt after heating. So to pull our picture back in here to show well what we're going to have here are those three pieces of the data and when we analyze this we have to recognize that what we're ultimately going for here is that ratio of the anhydrous salt to the water and so um, in order to find that out we need to start and find out well what's what mass of the anhydrous salt do we have and what mass of the water did we have in this and so we'll start with the anhydrous salt and we have to recognize that after the heating, our goal is to have just the anhydrous salt in the test tube. So if we take that mass of the test tube plus the salt after heating, and we subtract out the mass of the test tube, and remember we didn't change the test tube along the way, um, that we should be left over with just the mass of the anhydrous salt. So for our example here, uh, we'll just plug in our numbers and we could determine that in this set of example data um, this should give us the mass of the anhydrous salt is 4.114 grams now we'll take a look for the water that was in that 
uh, hydrate to begin with. What we should recognize here is the only difference that we have before and after heating is that before heating, the test tube contained the water that was bound up in that hydrate. And after the heating, we tried to drive off all that water. Where Our goal was to get rid of all the water. So the difference between the, the mass of the test tube and salt before the heating and after the heating, the difference between those two masses should be the mass of the water that we drove off from our hydrate. And if we did a perfect job, we'd completely get rid of all the water out of there and be left with nothing but the anhydrous salt. And so plugging our numbers in from our example here would lead us to uh, having 2.322 grams of water. So we'll just take a look at these numbers again. We've got our 4.114 grams of the copper sulfate, and that's our anhydrous version, no, no water in there. Then we have our 2.33 grams of water. And at first glance, we may be tempted to take a look at this and say, well, we've got a, a, about a four to two ratio here. We have a two to one ratio of the copper sulfate to the water. But we have to be careful because in a chemical formula, we want a ratio of the particles or we want a ratio of the moles of particles. We don't want a ratio of the mass of the different compounds. And if we just try to do that four to two, that's gonna be a mass ratio. We want a mole ratio. So we're gonna be using the molar mass and we will use the molar mass of copper sulfate to determine how many moles of copper sulfate were in the test tube. Likewise, we'll use the molar mass of water to find out the number of moles of water that we drove off. And now we will take a look at these numbers because we have now we have this mole ratio. And as we look at our mole ratio, well, this won't go real well into a, a chemical formula. So we want to get this on a nice whole number and the lowest whole number ratio we can, we can have. Of course, we know the lowest whole number or at least the lowest positive whole number we can have is one. So what we will do is we'll take the smaller of these two numbers and we will divide both our number of moles by that smaller of the two numbers. That way we keep our ratio consistent and we'll put it on the basis of the smaller of the two being one. And so in this case, we would say for every one mole of copper sulfate, we end up with five moles of water. So we can now write our chemical formula for the hydrate of copper sulfate. And so we have the CuSO4, and we put a little dot there, and the dot says that, the, that those five water molecules that are listed are bound up in the crystal structure of the copper two sulfate. Or we could call this, uh, that this is a copper two sulfate pentahydrate. Now, as a note for my Chem 2 students, as we go through this lab, um, we have to be careful because as we take a look at this, um, this example, the data is all nice and clean. It's all, I, I made up the data. And so uh, we have a very, very clear ratio of five to one. But in this lab, there's lots of little things that can go wrong and uh, that will lead us to answers that aren't quite as nice and neat and pretty as this. And so even though we know that copper, copper two sulfate is a pentahydrate, uh, don't be surprised if, you're, if your numbers lead you to a different conclusion, but we're going to use the what we're going to use the numbers that you get in your lab, and we'll try to uh, round those to the nearest whole number if at all possible, um, and then we'll have lots of nice things to talk about for sources of error in our lab.